Merry Christmas. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, this is cool. Hey, listen, I've been waiting like all year for what's in this bag. <laughs> thank you so much. Let me see. Oh, this is the thing I asked you for. The little thing that um charges the stuff and it makes it clean. I needed that. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, man. You, so oh you got everything I asked for oh. in this bag. Man, I'm telling you, baby, I waited all year just for this. I'm so grateful. You give the greatest gifts, boo. Wow. wow Thank you so wow. much. Oh, man. Look at this. Wow. That is so good. And you know, you know what's so amazing about this time of year you said, is that you've been waiting all year to receive these presents, yes. these gifts. Yes, baby. But Thank I'm, you I'm, for I'm doing telling you, really um, I'm so glad that you like everything. But let's not really forget about the reason for this season, and it was because God sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into this yeah. world. Hey, hey, hold on. To redeem all mankind for those who are willing to accept him and so enjoy the presence but don't forget about being in the presence of Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit God the Father you know baby I I can't say I've been thinking of it that way I, I really been just excited about the gifts so perhaps I'll look into what you're saying yeah I appreciate it and I guarantee you it'd be the best decision you ever made the more that you embrace this season through um, the Redeemer Jesus Christ, the better as you get old and, and as we continue to grow spiritually, these won't mean as much. They'll still have some meaning, but they won't, the meaning won't be greater than the real gift, and that's Jesus Christ. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Glad you like it. a jealous God. Exodus 34 tells us that he is a jealous God. See, last week, Pastor, we dealt with he is jealous. Yes. We were examining, weren't we, ILM? The fact that God doesn't want any other gods coming before him. Amen. And we examined that in the context of our message, Pastor, of he's jealous last week, we determined that we have allowed some lowercase God, lowercase G, gods, to usurp the one and only God. That's right. His presence in our lives. We have uh, celebrated other gods, Amen. such as Red Suit, Santa God, or other gods that you may worship such as commercialism and things mm -hmm. of that nature right that's so that's good. where we were last week that we understood that he doesn't want anything coming before his arrival that's right come on Pastor. my god so this led us to this week let me ask you a question has your joy been stolen mm. has your peace been apprehended by an enemy of the state. In other words, has your Christmas been stolen? Mm. As you have began to open your presents this morning and you've begun to enjoy the fact of what your loved ones have bought you, I want to bring you this message this morning yes. to make sure that along with your presents, that you have received this morning that you do not be absent of the presence yeah, that's good, of the Pastor. king that we're celebrating this morning. Yeah. The title of this message today is The Grinch That Stole Christmas. The Grinch That Stole Christmas. What is a Grinch? See, we know the Grinch as a character that Dr. Seuss, some of us that are young, no, Dr. Seuss, 
and his characters that he came up with. And one of his characters that he came up with was Cat in the Hat. Yeah. And another one, I know you remember. And the other one was The Grinch, mm. right? Yes. And uh, you remember the premise of The Grinch that stole Christmas, right? Yes. And so what I want to do is give you the colloquialism that has been formed in our society today. In other words, yes, 1957, I believe, Pastor. Okay. He came up with that. And ever since 57, all the way till now, we have been celebrating some green looking goblin mm. that terrorizes us during the time of Santa Claus. You follow what I'm saying? Yes. Known as the Grinch. And so here's some definition or here's a defined definition of a Grinch. Okay. A Grinch, if you're taking notes, is a person or a thing that spoils or dampens yeah. the pleasure of others. I'll say that one more time. A Grinch is a person or a thing Hmm. that spoils or dampens the pleasure of uh, others. Amen? Amen. A person who aggressively sets out to ruin mm. the Christmas holidays for others. Yeah. What does he or she do? They aggressively, aggressively set forth, set out, deliberately try mm. to take away the ruin or the or ruin Christmas for others. Amen? Amen. And so that's a Grinch. That's what we find a Grinch to be. And I want to know, mm. have you allowed the Grinch to steal your Christmas? See, let's look at it this way. The premise of the Grinch, Pastor, was a uh, town called the Who Town, if you remember that storyline. And it was the Who's. And here we have a character that's been isolated. Now, this character in the Grinch movie has been isolated for 53 years. Mm -hmm. hmm. He was reclusive for 53 years. Now, how many of you have heard the storyline, Misery Loves Company? Hallelujah, I have too. And I believe, Pastor, that there's some truth inside of that. Mm -hmm. Misery loves company. Here we have a character that was isolated by his own choice, by his own challenges that he had, by his own social ineptitude, mm -hmm. right? He decided, hey, I'm going to be reclusive for 53 years. I can imagine that he was miserable. Mm -hmm. For those 53 years and inside of the storyline he hated this time of the year when the who's would get all excited about christmas mm -hmm. amen? amen so here's the concept going on here i want to do some parallelism here i want to bring a parallel between the grinch and the grinch in the context of what i'm using him today mm. see the grinch in the context in which i'm using him today is the devil and see he also is in isolation yeah see the bible says that at some that. point the devil's going to be in isolation for a thousand years Ooh. And then he's going to be let loose. Yeah. And at that point that he's let loose, yeah. he's going to persuade evil amongst everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to persuade leaders and all of that, right? Revelation 20, check it out. And when he does this, they all are going to be apprehended by the angel of light, by Jesus' yeah. return, amen? Yeah. And yeah. when he returns, he's going to set forth the devil and all of the false prophets mm. in the lake of fire. My Lord. And which the devil will be able to sit there and contemplate all of his evil choices for eternity. Mm. That is, he'll be burning in the lake of fire without any mm. restitution, without any salvage at all. Right. Just miserable. Yeah, amen. Amen, Pastor. And so here's what I find. Because misery loves company, the devil wants you and I to be in that miserable spot yes, with him. Yes, so yes, he devised a plan, like the Grinch devised a plan, to take Christmas away from yeah. the town of who? Now, in the context of the Dr. Seuss concept, there's Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. And there's Rudolph. Mm -hmm. The reindeer mm -hmm. and all of these caricatures, right, that have been created. 
But what I would like to do is right alongside the lie, I would like to tell you the truth. Hallelujah. I'll we say that pastor. again. Right pray. alongside the lie, I'm going to expound on the truth. Now here yeah. we have a sentence of life imprisonment in the lake of fire for the Grinch known as the devil. And here we have isolated 53 years in the context of the lie of the storyline of the Grinch, right? So here we have two caricatures that both want that they, they are miserable. Mm -hmm. And they both want others to be miserable. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And so in the Grinch story, his plan was to cancel Christmas. And how did he do that? If you remember the line. The storyline went a little bit like this. He dressed up as you know who, and he went about stealing the P R E S N E N T S <laughs> presents of the Who families, right? He stole their Christmas presents, right? Mm. And they were sad, and they were supposed to be sad. And then here you know the storyline goes where he had a change of heart. Yeah. Okay, now in the truth side of this storyline, we have the devil. Posing as the Grinch. That's good. And his desire is to steal Christmas from you and I. Mm -hmm. And so the way that he decided that he would steal Christmas away from us is that he decided that he would put a plan in place. And so I'm going to expound on this plan by having you to turn to Matthew chapter 2. Turn to Matthew chapter 2 and we're going to begin reading pastor yes, at sir. verse number 16 okay. and what i'm trying to unfold to you here is whom the devil has used because the devil needs a body yes. and god needs a body That's right. always remember that ilm the devil needs a body someone to use yes. and god needs someone to use That's right. and so in this context of matthew 2 16 we're getting to see who the devil has tried to use yes. to kill christmas mm. for us amen? Amen. amen matthew 2 16 and it reads then herod when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men was exceedingly angry. Yes. And he sent forth and put to death all the male children who were in Bethlehem hmm. and in all its districts from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the wise men. Mm, thank you so much. So here we have the character of Herod being the personage that the devil is going to use to apprehend Jesus right? Before yes. his birth comes. Amen? Amen. He's trying to what? Kill, Kill Jesus. He's trying to murder That's the right. baby Jesus. Now yeah. let me expound on why he's trying to murder him. Because Herod is selfish. He's self aggrandized He's full of himself yeah. and he's currently in power. Yeah. So yeah. this prophecy of an incoming king, yeah. a messiah yeah. is supposed Hallelujah. to take the place of being the king of the whole world. Yeah. So Herod is thinking when this baby Jesus shows uh -huh. up that the Magi and everyone else has been talking about. Yes. Think about it. They heard some scripture before. Yeah. Isaiah came before Matthew. Yeah. And so they heard Isaiah's story that a child would be born. Yes. That the government upon this world would be upon On his, his shoulders. shoulders. They right. heard all of that. And so he said, listen, before he arrives, yeah. I tell you what. If he arrives, he's yeah. going to take my place. So I got to kill him. Yeah, yeah, because if I, I kill him, I can remain in the position of power yeah. that I currently influence. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And so he sets forth a plan to kill baby Jesus. Yeah. What I want to get you to see is a picture. So here's what I want you to do this morning. I want you to step yourself into our, hmm, I'll call it, graphical spiritual common sense corner this morning okay i want you to see what i'm saying this morning so check this out here we have herod who's currently in power and baby jesus who's supposed to be born and ascend into power yeah okay that's right all right so here's the deal here we have the backdrop here let me give you the scene we got nazareth Okay, we got Nazareth is where Joseph and Mary are positioned at this time. Yeah. We have immaculate conception. Yes. So that we have here, Joseph has not touched Mary. 
That's they've right. gotten together, but they've not consummated the marriage. That's right. Come on. Pastor. And so here she is impregnated yeah. inside of her womb is the savior of the whole Hallelujah. world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so here we have an angel that's Demon. come to Thank that man to say, man, don't leave that woman because I, I, your Lord God have impregnated her. I want you to raise this child. Now here we have jo Joseph going through all of that logical thinking that he mm -hmm. must have gone through. Mm -hmm. I ain't touched her. Who done touched her? You see what right. I'm saying? Yeah. And here's an angel saying, no man has touched her. Your God has touched her. Yeah. I wonder would you buy that? Hmm. So here we go. Here we have Nazareth, Joseph, Mary. We have baby Jesus in the womb. Yeah. We have a decree coming forth to kill that baby. Yeah. Where are they currently? In Nazareth. Where is the decree coming from? The jurisdiction of Judea. Yeah. So here we have a ruler who has providence over Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts at that time of the earth yeah. saying, I want every firstborn to be killed. Mm -hmm. I want every child from this age to that age to be killed. To Every another, male child. Think another. about that. Yeah. So here we have Joseph and Mary. What would you do? What would you do if someone said, I'm coming to kill your baby? Mm. I'm coming to kill your baby. So they would hide, right? So they escaped the jurisdiction they were in, which was Nazareth. Mm. They started their journey, Pastor and ILM family, from Nazareth, and they said, listen, the prophecies came before then. Yeah, Jerusalem yeah. is where they got to make it to. Yeah. Okay, let's get this straight in our mind. They had a caravan, but it wasn't a Dodge caravan. <laughs> they had camels and oxen and things of that nature to travel along a desert road yeah. with mountains and terrain that was out of this world. Yes. Literally, it wasn't yes. in this world. It was yes. out. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And yes. here we have them traveling with a pregnant lady. Yes. So here we have, if you want to get some graphics here, 150 mile journey mm. that they had to make, Pastor. Mm -hmm. A 150 mile journey from one location to another to escape an assassination mm. attempt on Ooh. her baby Jesus, okay? Yeah. So here we have them traveling by foot, by Campbell, 150 miles, meaning it was uh, 80 to uh, 75 to 85 miles mm. one way from Nazareth to Jerusalem. Mm. And then the Bible says that once Herod died, that Herod died, they traveled back from Bethlehem to Jerusalem. So here's my question to you this morning. If you have the ruler of this whole town looking for this baby Jesus, you have the population of Nazareth at the time of Jesus was about, mm, I would say 400, 400 people. Now that's not a lot, right? Mm -mm. Some jurisdictions, oh. some accounts say it was 1,600 to 2,000 people. Then we have later accounts that say it was about 400. So I'm gonna go with the 400, okay? Small. Now, we have Nazareth with another amount. Bethlehem had an amount, Nazareth had an yes, amount. Yes. So Bethlehem had 300 population, Nazareth had 400. What is that a total of, ILM? 700. So we have 700. And then each town in between those towns had a certain number of people. Correct? That's good, Pastor. That were procreating, that is creating babies. Correct? <laughs> so here's my common sense corner activity this morning. Mm -hmm. Here we have, my God. Thank you, Lord. We have a assassination attempt on a Jesus. But what I want you to see is what transpired in the middle of this attempt. Here we have anywhere from 30 to 40 babies yeah, come on, that Jesus. were literally murdered. Mm. Now that's sad. That's sad. They were murdered. Don't you think that Herod and all of his troops that he had working for him mm. between Nazareth and Jerusalem mm -hmm. could find a, a slew of camels, a pregnant lady. Yeah. Don't you think they could have found them? But here we have the fact that they didn't find them. Hallelujah. 
I wanted you to put that together for a minute. There's no logical reason why Herod shouldn't have found that baby and killed that baby, but he killed 40 other babies. You get what I'm saying? Yes. See, here's the deal. He had to come in this lineup. He, meaning Jesus, had to walk this way. Check it out. From Capernaum, the Sea of Galilee, on, that's Pastor. where Nazareth is. Joseph and Mary started back from that way. They went up the roads of Mount Tabor, mm. okay? So that's rough terrain. Then they came through the Valley of Armageddon, known as the Jezreel Valley. That's right. Then they went to Sisyphus. I messed that one up, but it's Bethashan. That was th through the um, through the Jordan River, uh -huh. Pastor. They had to yes, come through there. Then they went down in the valley area and came to Samaria, yeah. where they found Samaria, Sebaste, and Shachar, which is the city of Shechem, yes, right? Yes. So then they travel further down, and then they get to Bethel, Bethel that's right. right? Bethel, right? Then they pass by this famous city named Jericho. Jericho. You see what I'm saying? And then they come from Jericho, and now they're in the city or the country of Judea, yeah, yeah. where Bethlehem is and Jerusalem is. Yes, yes. So here's That's my point. Classic, right? They traveled all the way from there by camel, all the way to there, and they weren't apprehended? Let me tell you, the assassination attempt failed. Thank you, Jesus. And the baby was saved. Hallelujah, Lord God. What I'm trying to get to is that baby Jesus was saved by the Almighty God. God and what I need you to understand is Thank no you, matter Lord. how bad a situation is looking for you, yeah. if God is for you, then I ask you a question. Who can be against That's you? Right. And in this case, God was for the baby Jesus. You follow Hallelujah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So he was not apprehended. So here's my question. So how is it? that this Grinch mm. is trying to steal our Christmas. Lord. Thank well, you, let Lord. me explain it this way. See, this is how the story ended up. He tried to assassinate baby Jesus, but he failed, right? So then he stopped and he tried another way. Right, that's right. And here's the way that he tried, Pastor. The devil is trying now to steal your Christmas mm. by stealing, watch this now, the presence yeah. of the arrival of your king yes. from you. He's trying to steal your P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E. -E. Yeah. And while you're focusing on your P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S, -E uh -huh. God is wrapped up in your presence. Yes, yes. Amen? And so what the devil decided to do, Pastor, is take the arrival of Jesus, Come on. the victory of him Come coming on, here Pope, and being good. born, and he said, I will take your presence away from you because, let me say it this way, if you can't kill the body, mm. what's the next motion that you go for? Mm. The mind. Mm. If you can't kill the body, you can try to kill the mind. Mm -hmm. So here we have Satan trying to kill Jesus, and he could not kill Jesus. That's right. So what does Lord. he do? He tries to kill Jesus from our minds. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. by taking us to a journey that celebrates a man in the red suit or Xmas or any other thing other than the arrival of our coming king. That's right. That's how he had uh, an ability to steal our Christ Moss from us. He has us to focus on things that are not Jesus's presence right. to us. That's right. And his presence to us. Yes. Jesus is both a present Come on. and presents yes. to us. See, his arrival was a present. God gave him, Emmanuel, God what? With, With us. us. So he gave us the present of the Savior. Yes. And while we have the Savior, we're supposed to experience the presence yeah. Of uh, that Savior, Jesus that's Christ. That's so my question to you, you this Lord. morning is, are you experiencing the presence of your Savior? Hallelujah. See, I understand. By now you have unraveled many gifts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Many presents. Thank you, Jesus. But now I want you to focus on, for the rest of the day, 
the presence yeah. of the Savior. Hallelujah. I Hallelujah. want you to focus on the fact that a Grinch known as the devil tried to steal, Hallelujah, tried to Lord. apprehend your Jesus from your mind. Have you going into debt? Have you going into suicidal thoughts because you are alone during this holiday? Have you running up with people that you shouldn't be running up with? Have you engaging with people that you shouldn't be engaging with? Have you drinking and celebrating and fellowshipping with people that you shouldn't be fellowshipping with? And all he wanted you to do was focus on giving yourself yes. as a present. Yes. To the masses of people yes. yes, the gifts are wonderful Continue to give the gifts Continue to enjoy the presents That you have received mm. But God is more interested In your presence Being filled with the Holy Spirit yes. Right? Yes. Giving of yourself To everyone He's more interested in the fact that he gave Jesus as a yes. present Thank you, Lord. To Thank you, you Lord. Thank and you. that's why you're celebrating This holiday you, right now because a savior was born. Hallelujah. A son has been manufactured by an almighty God. Yeah. Placed in a virgin Mary. Come on, Pastor. And put in your life to save your life. Thank you, God Lord. wants you thinking of that. Not necessarily only the commercialism of this season. Yeah. But let Jesus continue to be the Hallelujah. reason for this season. Hallelujah. Enjoy the present that you received this morning. But now I want you to focus on the P R E N P R E S E N C E. -E. -E. I want you to focus on the presence of the God that you serve. Amen. Don't let the Grinch steal your Christmas. Don't let him steal the reason why we even celebrate this holiday, which is Jesus. Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is Hallelujah. the reason Hallelujah. for this season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you celebrate with your family, Hallelujah. I want you to go around the room today after this message. And I want you to reestablish mm. your gratefulness for the Savior coming into Thank your you life. Lord. Thank you, Almighty Reestablish God. the reason Thank why you, we Jesus. celebrate this Thank in the Holy first Spirit. place. And then continue to enjoy the gifts that were given to you today. Thank Amen. You. Amen. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ Hallelujah. as your personal Lord and Savior, reach out to him this morning and yes. ask him to come in. And he will. And the same Holy Spirit that filled that Virgin Mary's yeah. womb will fill your spiritual womb this morning yeah, and you, fill Lord. you with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And then you will receive power. Yeah. And after that, the Holy Ghost come upon you and you receive that power. Now you can live right and experience the mm. P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E of God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. I hope that you experience the value of this message. And if you have, get with us and let us know. Until then, always remember that ILM loves you. But more importantly, God loves you. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Peace. See you soon. Blessings.